Now it's time to do pra uh, practice problem two. Uh, all right, and so it's a question on L'Hopital's rule. So what is L'Hopital's rule? It says, uh, so I'm, I'm going to ignore some details here. It says that the limit as x goes to uh, a, where a is anything, usually, you know, zero or infinity, but it could be anything, of f of x over g of x uh, is equal to the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. If the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is indeterminate. And as soon as I finish writing out this very long word, I will say what it means, indeterminate. OK, so what does that mean? That means that if you were to plug in a, including you know plugging in infinity, it's kind of a weird thing. But if you were to plug this in, then the limit would be of the form 0 over 0 or uh, plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. And so, as you know, uh, limits of this form could turn out to be anything, okay? Uh, and so frequently when you take the derivative of f and g, like L'Hopital's rule um, suggests you should do, it becomes determinant and then you can just plug in and figure out the answer. And BTW, um, there are some other caveats on f and g, like f has to be differentiable, g has to be differentiable, and uh, the derivative of g has to be non-zero in a neighborhood of a, except possibly at a. That probably totally made your eyes glaze over, right? So basically you just take the derivative. Now uh, let's get started. So what should I do with L'Hopital's rule? Let me try to, I'm going to send it away. It's going to move down south. Go. Okay, so let's just look at a first. It is asking for this, okay? So first check to make sure that it is an indeterminate limit. So how do I do that? I plug in zero and see what happens. So if I if I were to plug in zero, I would get this, right? And remembering that sine of zero is zero, this is zero over zero, which is definitely indeterminate. So using L'Hopital's rule to do a is okay. And what happens after we use L'Hopital's rule? So this a here is equal to, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative of the top, which is cosine x minus 1 over 3x squared. OK, and now you uh, check it again. So plug in and see what happens. So, um, you know, never forget that when you're taking a limit in calculus class, you'd want to plug in if at all possible. So what happens when I, when I plug in 0 here? Well, remember that cosine of 0 is 1. So on top I get 1 minus 1, and on the bottom I get, uh, sorry, 3 times 0, right? And so this is 0 over 0, and it's indeterminate again. Okay, so that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's uh, bad because it doesn't tell me the answer, but it's good because I can use L'Hopital's rule again. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule again. Okay, so uh, now the derivative of the top is minus sine x over 6x. Okay, now check to see what happens when you plug in 0 to this creature. And you're probably way ahead of me. You see, if you plug in 0, then you get 0 in the top, right? You plug in 0, then you get 0 in the bottom. So it's still indeterminate. So use L'Hopital's rule again. Okay, so by L'Hopital's rule, I promise not all these questions are this obnoxious. Sometimes you have to use L'Hopital's rule over and over and over again. Okay, and so this is equal to uh, negative cosine x over 6, and now we're finally done. 
Okay, if you plug in 0, there's no x in the bottom anymore, but if you plug 0 into the top, this is just negative 1, and so the answer to this problem is negative 1 sixth. So I will write my answer in here, but then I'll just sweep it down again later. When I Maybe I'll write it up here. So the answer is negative 1 sixth. All right, no problem. Okay. You know, frequently in these L'Hopital rule questions, there's some polynomial part that just gets beaten down into a constant as you take the derivative over and over again, so that's kind of what happened here. Um, now let's take a look at b. All right, first plug in. Uh, what happens if you plug in? You get e to the 0 minus 1 over 0. And so remembering that anything to the 0 is 1, except arguably 0, you have 1 minus 1 over 0 is 0 over 0. Okay, so it is indeterminate. That means we can use L'Hopital's rule. And we shall use L'Hopital's rule. And b by L'Hopital's rule is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of, uh, okay, so you have a little chain rule thing here. So the derivative of e to the 3t is e to the t times the derivative of 3t is 3. This negative 1 just vanishes because it's a constant. And in the denominator, the derivative of t is 1. And by the way, I've been, I've been calling yeah, I need to fix this, right? The variables have to match. This should be the limit as t goes to 0. Uh, that really makes me hate myself. But uh, except for that mistake, we're, we're done with this we're done with this part because now plugging in works. What happens when you plug in? You get e to the 0 times 3, and this is just 3. Okay. That's the answer. So the answer to b is 3. Okay, no problemo. Now let's look at C. Okay, so here is C. Uh-oh, it's trig. So what's the first thing you do, right? You have to plug in to make sure that L'Hopital's rule can be used. And sometimes the book is tricky, and I guess this time I'm tricky too, because this one turns out not to be of indeterminate form. So taking the derivative and using L'Hopital's rule would actually be a mistake. So why is it not in indeterminate form? Well, what does this turn out to be? Remember that cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine, right? So this is 1 over sine pi over 2 just by definition. And if you look at the unit circle, it will only take a glimpse of it to convince you that sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this is 1, okay. So we have 1 on the bottom here, and on the top we have 1 minus 1 is 0 over 1. But that's no problem at all. That's just the number 0. Okay, and so we're done. There's no, there's no need to use L'Hopital's rule. And uh, so I can clear a space. I'm going to erase this here. So great. And we're ready to go on to D. And oh no, D is weird looking too. It's actually a product. Um, so remember that you can use L'Hopital's rule to find, or frequently you can use L'Hopital's rule to find indeterminate products. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if you were to plug in negative infinity here, uh, you have, I know this is kind of improper, but um, it can be helpful. Okay, so you should know that e to the negative infinity, what does this mean? This really means the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x. And if you look at a graph of e to the x, you should be able to figure out what this what this is. And, you know, it goes asymptotically down to zero, right? So this part is really zero. And what is this? Uh, this is, what happens to x squared is, as x goes to negative infinity, it goes to infinity, right? Because x squared looks like this. So at negative infinity, um, x squared is going off to infinity. So what this product is, is kind of infinity times zero. And just like zero over zero can be anything, infinity times zero can kind of be anything. And what that means is that a limit of this form could turn out to have any limit whatsoever. 
All right. So how do I translate this into something that I could use L'Hopital's rule on? So I use an algebraic trick. And I talked about this in class. The algebraic trick you use is any product a times b can always be written as a over 1 over b, right? OK, so you know this is just algebra. So what happens if I do a trick like this here? I have a choice as to which one I'm going to put on top and which one I'm going to put on the bottom. Here, I choose to put x squared on top. Um, so I can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to infinity, uh, sorry, negative infinity. And I'll put x squared on top. And then I, I put 1 over e to the x on the bottom. I'm just following this rule. And the reason I didn't just do it is because a simpler way to say this is e to the negative x. So just to avoid a mess, I'm going to go ahead and write it like that the first time. Good. Now, uh, OK, so I've translated a product into a limit. And it's probably a limit of indeterminate form. But just for practice, let me confirm that that's true. OK, so what happens if you plug in negative infinity? On top, you get infinity. And what happens if you plug in negative infinity to e to the negative x? Well, the negatives cancel. And you get e to the infinity. And you know e to the infinity, the limit of e to the x as x goes to infinity is infinity. So this is infinity over infinity, which is indeed a limit of indeterminate form. So we can use L'Hopital's rule to answer this question. And now we will do so. So this is equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Take the derivative of top and bottom. So on top, it's 2x. And on the bottom, there's a little chain rule action. So e to the negative x. And then by the chain rule, the negative sign pops out. OK, so let's check on this situation. So what happens if we plug in now? Uh, so. Uh, I hope you can see that if you plug in negative infinity to the top, you get negative infinity. And if you plug in negative infinity to the bottom, then you get negative infinity. OK, so it's still, it's still indeterminate. All right, so that means I have to keep going. So um, this is equal by L'Hopital's rule to the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Uh, the derivative on top is 2. And on the bottom, you know, it's just going to alternate sign. So it's back to e to the negative x. And hopefully we're done at this point. So let's just make sure. OK, so I have x going to negative infinity. And I've got negative x here. So the negative signs cancel. This is basically 2 over e to the infinity. OK, and uh, so this is 2 over infinity. And this is, this is 0. So all right. And why is that? Well, you know, if you have two eighths of a pi, that's a pretty small piece. If you have two millionths, that's a vanishingly small piece. And uh, you can see that as, as, as the denominator here is getting huge, as it approaches infinity, this fraction approaches 0. And so we know the answer. The answer is 0. Right, so equals 0. And that is it for this practice exam.